Hi, thank you for joining me today in crafting with System 3 Resins. We want to show off making some coasters today. They're a lot of fun to make and really make some beautiful stuff that is also functional. So, as always, when working with resins, it's important to be wearing your gloves. It's always want to do your best to keep them off your skin. Other than that, as long as you keep them off with your skin, you can work with them inside. No issues at all. Alright, so I have these molds. You always want to look for silicone molds. Um, once the epoxy cures, they won't bond to the silicone, so you can just crack them out. Old sets are easy to find just about anywhere. So to start, I think I'm going to lay down a base coat. And then I'm going to place these stones in them. Let that set up. And then I'm going to pour, fill the rest with clear. I like the depth and clarity the epoxy has. See, looking through it, and it gives it that river rock look. Wet stones at the bottom of the river. I'm going to go for two different colors. Everybody likes to see gold at the bottom of the river, so I think I'm going to go with a nice gold and probably a sparkly black as an accent. The mosaic resin is a one-to-one -one mixing ratio. Mix one part resin to one part hardener. The best way to do that is pour the resin in first. Pour the hardener directly on top of the resin, doubling the volume. Here I did 50 milliliters of resin to 50 milliliters of hardener and blend till it's thoroughly mixed. The epoxy will be cloudy when you first start to mix it. Scrape the edges, scrape the bottom. The size volume should take you about a minute to get fully incorporated. Once I see it clearing up, scrape any excess off the stick. Since I'll be making two colors, out to two separate smaller cups for tinting. I do Amish black. I'm using the dry cast effects pigments. They give a very interesting effect as far as it looks like. It look like a lot of little grains in there, which I think will match nicely with the natural river look that we're going for. What I'm even gonna do, I think, with our black is mix a little bit of our glitter in there with it and give it, give it some shine. Gold, I'm gonna make a little bit of a blend. I do wanna brighten that up just a hair. So I think I'll add a little bit of yellow in with that color. Yeah, that's a nice gold. All right, let's get our black mixed up here. Okay, so I'll do one where I pour a base coat of gold and use the black as the accent. And I'll probably do another switch it up and uh, base coat of black and the gold is the accent. Now I'm going to fill the bottom here. I don't want to fill it all the way up because I do want to give it a clear cast on top of it. So, spread the resin out until you got the bottom coated. This will glue those stones in place preparation for filling up the rest of the mold. Just enough to fill the bottom. What's nice about this resin system is it's all going to self-level and flow back together so this stage you don't have to be super careful just get it evenly distributed and gravity will do the rest. Alright, now I have these are just polished quartz um, just standard quartz crystals that have uh, been gone through a rock turner and that gives them a nice, nice polished sheen to them. I'm just going to place these in the resin. Make a bit of a natural type of placement, maybe evenly spaced. What I love about working with mosaic resin in specific is the versatility it has. You can coat boards with it, you can use it as a clear protective coating, you can cast objects in it. This resin bonds to just about everything. You can do a lot with it, make a lot of fun stuff. Great product to have in any craft room. Alright, I'm pretty happy with that placement. 
Now I'm gonna add the accent color. Mixed epoxy is okay to go into the garbage. It's gonna cure hard and be, you know, inert just like any other plastic. The liquids you will want to dispose of properly. Same place you dispose of unused paint. You can take your epoxy. I'm gonna use some pipe pets to give this, add these accents. All right, well, I'm gonna sit and let this gel so you can pour on top of it as soon as this is gelled to a uh, tack-free state. Um, it should take about five hours in room temperature conditions. A good test is if you were to poke it with a stick and nothing transfers back to the stick. Your resin underneath is gelled and you can pour right on top of it. And you get chemical bonding between the layers and they will never come apart. So I'm gonna protect these from dust while they cure. And I'll see you when we're ready to pour our clear. All right, well, these have been curing for about six hours now. They should be hard to the touch. You can test that. Yeah, they've, they've gelled at this point. So, clean stick. We're ready to pour a clear coat on top of it. So to fill this, it's kind of a bit of an estimation. I guessing I'm gonna need about an ounce and a half per per fill um, mix up a hundred milliliters which is about four ounces give me give me a little extra because tend to underestimate those estimate the volume you need by getting the surface area multiplied by your depth that will give you cubic inches Epoxy being 100% solids, it doesn't shrink at all as it dries. So what you pour is what you get. 100 milliliters of mixed epoxy will fill 100 milliliters of volume once cured. And the same mixing and measuring as before. One to one. Get the resin on top of the hardener. Thoroughly blend them be a little gentler this time with a deeper pour you need to be um, you don't want to be too much air in there the resin system does deaerate well in a coating application I found time and time again that there's actually you don't even need to torch it all the bubbles will come out just on their own uh, when you get into casting where that bubbles got a little bit further to go it's one of the scenarios where use of a torch could be useful. And also with that, I'm being a little bit more gentle with my mixing here. I don't need to make it work harder than it needs to. So I'm gonna spend a little bit more time, just a little bit slower. I wanna fill these, so they're just brimming. Slightly dome it bubbles come out the volume is going to shrink a little bit because these bubbles have a little bit further to go I am going to use a torch any culinary torch butane torch propane torch um, will work good for removing bubbles it's actually the, the co2 from the torch that pops the bubbles not the heat um, so you can actually use your breath but a torch is much more efficient Keep the flame about six inches away. Move quickly. You don't want to scorch the epoxy. Scorching the epoxy could leave a bit of a visual defect. That's pretty good. There's a few residual bubbles. You can come back in 15 minutes and do it again once they've come to the surface. Let's cover it back up. Now, in doing casting, this is going to be hard to the touch in the morning. Um, it is a 72 hour full cure. While it's nice and hard, you are more prone to marring the surface if you pop it out of the mold early. If you give it that full 72 hours, it's developed all its properties, it's scratch resistance is there, you're not gonna harm the surface. So be patient with it. Let it sit those three days and you'll have uh, some beautiful coasters that set your drinks on. I have my test piece here. Now what I've always struggled with is finishing making these look nice. So I'm going to show you how technique I found. This is a nice paint marker. So I've just lightly sanded the surface, give it, a, give it a little bit of bite. 
I'm gonna cover those, cover the sides with the marker. And it's just gonna make it more uniform. Well, thank you for tuning in to Crafting with System 3 Resins. Uh, if you have any suggestions of products you'd like to see us try in the future, feel free to contact us and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you, bye.